Today we're going to talk about the different types of criminal threats that might present themselves after a disaster situation. Let's get to it. Before we start the video, let's do a little bit of a mental exercise. I want you to close your eyes and imagine to yourself what a marauder or a thug or a criminal looks like. What image is it that you have in your mind's eye? Well, this image gives us an indication of our biases. Our biases are based on what we've seen in the media, on where we come from. And something you're going to want to keep in mind throughout this video is that the various criminals and groups, which may or may not be criminals that I talk about in this video today, may or may not fit the mental image of what you perceive a criminal to be. This is going to be very important because not all threats are going to be what you expect them to be. And in fact, some of the people that you fear the most may be the people that you are ultimately going to fear the least as we go through this list of potential criminal threats. When I use the phrase direct use of force in this video, I'm referring to whatever behaviors the laws of your country will afford you as a means of defending yourself. The first type of criminal to prevent themselves in a disaster are going to be looters. The primary purpose of a looter is the acquisition of material items. These may be necessary or luxury items. These people are likely going to be targeting commercial districts, public buildings, and possibly even wealthier homes in the later stage of collapse. Now this type of criminal is the lowest level of criminality, meaning that there's little premeditation and there's a little strategy being employed. It's typically a decentralized mob with little leadership and is basically relying on its power of numbers. It relies on a herd mentality, a swarm mentality, it is spontaneous, and the sole intent of looters is to steal. The threat of violence is actually quite minimal unless you get involved, then a situation can potentially turn violent pretty quickly. It's basically indiscriminate theft. Now, crowd psychology tells us that when we see other people acting in a certain way, we're more likely to do it. And that's the exact same thing that happens in one of these mobs. When in these groups, individuals will lose their sense of self, their morality and reason, and do things that they might not otherwise do in the case of an individual because they don't feel legal recourse because they are protected by the crowd. Now, the way to resist looters is with a direct show of force, which is proportional to the threat, or simply evacuate the area, as you may simply be too overwhelmed to defend a territory. The next criminal threat in a SHDF situation is going to be drug addicts. They are typically a bit more calculated and premeditated and cunning in their thievery than looters are. They're going to be stealing things that they can trade for drugs or drugs themselves, and they may be targeting places where drugs can be found like pharmacies, hospitals, and nursing homes. Typically, they're not going to operate in large groups. They're likely going to be operating in small groups, pairs, or as individuals. Their primary purpose is the acquisition of drugs or things to trade for drugs. Now, most of these people don't want violence. They are simply looking for a fix, but they may use violence as a means to an end if necessary. Now, typically these people are not physically fit, but they are relentless. And if they are tweaking on something, then their strength could be intensified as a result of that. The means of resisting this sort of criminality is typically with a show of direct force. There may be other thieves which present themselves after disaster. They may be more calculated and discriminate in their thievery than the aforementioned groups. They may be actually stealing things that they need in order to survive. And these may be people who through normal times are law-abiding citizens, but find themselves in a predicament where their family is in need of stuff and they don't have it. Thus, the only alternative for them, or at least the only alternative they see in the moment, is to steal it from somebody who has it. They may be targeting residential, commercial, or industrial districts, and their primary purpose is the acquisition of items that they actually need 
to survive. Not the luxury items that the looters are after and not the drugs that the drug addicts are after. Typically, they're not going to want a violent encounter and are going to seek to avoid it at all costs. But thievery can also take a home invasive form in which the threat of violence will be certainly present. You can resist this level of criminality by having home security, surveillance, and of course a direct show of force if necessary. The next level of criminality is going to be vandalism. The purpose of vandals or anarchists in the colloquial sense of the word is destruction and intimidation. There's a risk of violence with this group as they may partake in behaviors which are reckless, mischievous, they may commit arson, and defacement of property. They may have a more centralized command than looters do, but they're still largely operating on crowd psychology principles. They're still largely disorganized, their goals are vague, and their sole purpose is to inflict as much destruction on property, be it private or public, as possible, and thus to intimidate and terrorize. There may be ideological, political, or religious motivations for this behavior. The best way to resist this form of vandalism is with a proportional show of force to evacuate the area or try to stay under the radar and blend in with gray man principles. Because these groups may be larger and more unruly, you may not be able to defend yourself with a direct show of force. So in this instance, it's important to have a backup bug out plan. The next group may likely be a greater hazard to themselves than people around them and that are people who are in a psychosis state or typically who have their mental health conditions stabilized by medication that for whatever reason are unavailable. Their primary purpose, whether they are able to articulate it or not, is stabilization. These people might be having a psychotic break, an anxiety attack, they might be in withdrawal from whatever medications they were on, and they may be a threat to themselves and others. The way to resist this group is to offer medical support, if at all possible. But we cannot be naive to the fact that if a person is in psychosis and they're coming at you and they think you are the devil and they're trying to take you out, you have to defend yourself, obviously. The next level of criminals are going to be the predators. Their primary purpose and aim is going to be sexual exploitation of some sort. They are likely going to operate as individuals or pairs or even small groups and it's important that you resist them with direct force. They will use these crisis opportunities in an attempt to kidnap and exploit people sexually. The next group is going to be psychopaths and sociopaths. These people may share in some of the sexual deviancy as the aforementioned predator group, but they also get off in hurting people. They lack empathy, they lack remorse. Their goal is exploitation, control, and sadism. In addition, these people may be parts of gangs or gang leaders, although they can operate in isolation also. These people are usually beyond redemption and you resist them with self-defense and direct use of force. The next criminal threats we're going to discuss are group threats. The first type of group is going to be a gang. There are currently over 30,000 gangs in North America. And after disaster strikes, some of those gangs will be disbanded and new ones will definitely emerge. The gang's primary purpose is control and power. Typically, this is on a local level. And typically, they don't carry with them a lot of ideological or political goals simply territorial dominance. Their members may possess some of the psychopathic traits as talked about in the last section. The crimes that they commit are things like theft, extortion, violence, robbery, racketeering, prostitution rings, and drug running. They're going to be much more organized than the last groups we talked about, and they may even have their own codes of conduct, laws, hierarchies, and chains of command. Some of these gangs are going to commit theft but the more calculated ones are likely going to partake in some form of extortion, which is going to start to look like a very feudalistic society, whereby they offer protection to people who can bring them resources. The best way to resist being coerced by a gang is with a proportional direct show of force, that is, if your group is proportional to theirs, or simply evacuating and bugging out if you are outmanned and outgunned. 
Another group which may be a potential threat but in normative times operates under the rule of law are various militia groups. Typically these groups are going to be law-abiding people who are just there to try to protect their own local communities. They may have some political or ideological motivations and they may even uh, self-describe in certain ways. But their primary purpose is for control and security on a local or regional level. So they may operate in exclusive areas and not trying to project that power beyond their borders. In such case, these are relatively benign groups that you may not have to worry about, especially if you are a member of that community and a part of that militia. Now, militias may be more better trained than gangs. They may have a more democratic leadership process. But I say may here because there is a risk with any of these groups that things can become tyrannical and undemocratic and people can start imposing new laws and it can quickly turn into a dictatorship. And that's the only reason why I put them on this list is that while they may be less authoritarian than gangs off the start and while they might have better relationships with their communities, uh, no groups are immune to corruption, especially when you don't have a due process of the law being followed. So in terms of resistance to one of these groups, you can either join them or avoid them. It's as simple as that. The next type of criminality to be wary of after disaster strikes are cults. These may be religious or ideological. Now, a cult is a social group that is defined by some sort of unusual religious, spiritual, or philosophical beliefs. They may have some sort of common interest that revolves around some charismatic personality or a goal. Their purpose is goal-oriented power and control and recruiting new members. They may be operating primarily on a local level, but unlike the militias and the gangs, they may actually be more expansionist and try to be influential beyond their borders because their goals may be political, racial, technological, ideological, and they might seek to disrupt the greater social balance. Because these groups may be larger and more irrational and extreme in their motivations, resisting them may be a losing battle. It's probably best to try to avoid these groups at all costs. The next group, which is not inherently criminal in nature, in fact is quite the opposite, is going to be law enforcement. Now, the purpose of law enforcement is just that, is to enforce the law. But there are going to be situations that we've seen throughout history where people are enforcing orders that are unjust. Now, the assessment of whether or not this is happening is going to be largely subjective. And I'm not talking about law enforcement in the everyday sense of the word. Here we're talking about martial law or a military dictatorship where people are following orders no matter how immoral or anti-constitutional they might be. This would be a group which would seek to expand its control apparatus nationally, so avoidance is going to be very difficult, and your only option may be compliance until you are able to effectively mount some sort of resistance. Another threat that might present itself in an SHTF situation similar to the last one would be an invading army from another country. Their purpose is going to be imperialistic and to conquer your country. Obviously, they're going to have highly centralized chains of command. Now, the only way to resist this is if you are part of some collective resistance movement, which has been coordinated by your own government, or it would be resisted asymmetrically by various militia groups. Unless there is some coordinated effort, resistance might be futile. So going back to our original thought exercise about what a criminal might look like after disaster, we can see now that there are going to be many threats which don't fit the stereotypical images in most people's mind. It's important that you have a broader understanding of what these potential criminal threats may be so you're not caught off guard. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper O. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products.
that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.